so excited, guys. Oh my God, I'm like jumping up and down. I'm so excited to welcome the very beautiful and super hot, super smart Nagina Sethi Abdullah. I actually learned to cook because of her uh, Spice Yourself Skinny program. Finally, after like 26 years of just mooching off my grandmother. And I highly recommend it because she, she helped me lose about like 15 pounds, especially off my midsection. And then she helped me feel super energetic and happy about eating healthy. I don't think that was even possible. Like I think I threw up after I had my first wheatgrass juice. So I was like, never again. But she has smoothies that actually taste good. And it's like idiot proof recipes, even for me. So if you get a chance to steal her recipes, please do because they're amazing. So welcome Nagina. Thank, thank you, Lee. I'm so excited. You're so hilarious. You're so oh. smart. I'm so happy to be here with you. Oh, me too. I'm thrilled. So, okay, let's dig down to the nitty gritty about how to become a skinny millionaire. So <laughs> do you, do you recommend liposuction or starving yourself to stay skinny? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, if there's another selection, which is none of the above, I would definitely yeah. choose that one. You really, you really, well, you really don't have to start in either of those places and you, you never really have to, to do any of those unless you're very, unless you really want to take off a lot of weight. But mm -hmm. I will talk more about like the actual healthy strategies to do it. But mm -hmm. I, liposuction, I mean, uh, there's so many other ways to go about it because a lot of times I know people will really actually say, Oh, I should just get liposuction because it yeah. seems easier. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the thing is, even if you get liposuction, you still have to maintain and learn healthy habits. And so a lot of times, you know, you still have to go through that. You don't want to go and get that done and then have it all come back on. But um, starving yourself, I used to actually believe you had to starve yourself mm -hmm. to lose weight, mm -hmm. but that's a major myth that I want to bust. Like I, I lost 40 pounds um, as wow. an adult. That's in my 30s. Wow. And I've helped many, many women, you know, including yourself lose weight mm. without feeling deprived and never feeling hungry. It's like against my morals to feel mm. hungry. If you eat the mm -hmm. right food, you'll never feel hungry. And that's the mm. only way you can sustain your weight loss and actually keep it going instead of going through yo-yos for the rest of your life. Wow. You just blew the minds of our audiences, I think. So thank you so much for sharing that. So like you said, you lost 40 pounds. So like, that's wow. How did, how did you get started on your fitness journey? Well, I got started. So I had actually been start uh, trying to lose weight my entire life, literally in my teens, 20s. Um, I wanted to go to Las Vegas and wear like a crop top. And I never felt like I could do that. I just never felt confident in my body. And I would always, I counted calories. I went to the gym multiple times a week for hours and hours. And no matter what, I could never, ever like feel in control of, of my body. I could never get it to where I wanted it to. And it was really challenging because I was successful in school. I was successful mm -hmm. in my career later on. And I just, but I just couldn't get my body uh, in the way that I wanted it to. And so what happened is that I started working as a management consulting, mm -hmm. a consultant at a top four firm. And I was traveling all over the place, um, jumping on planes and trains and traveling everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it, as you can imagine, that was a really busy lifestyle and it made it harder to be, to be fit uh, because I was like in restaurants that served delicious food every mm -hmm. evening and I had to work really long hours so I didn't get to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really challenging lifestyle. And then soon after that, I had my first child and then I had my second child and mm -hmm. with pregnancy comes additional weight. So I mm -hmm. had all of that weight that I'd never been able to get off in my earlier life, then this busy demanding um, work career, and then I had kids. And so I was mm -hmm. at a place where I didn't even want to get out of my bed in the morning because I just did not feel good in my body. And that's mm -hmm. when I decided I need to try something new because I tried every single diet out there. I'd done mm -hmm. paleo, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, like I'd done everything. Mm -hmm. And though those had worked, they hadn't they hadn't kept my weight off. And so mm -hmm. I knew I needed to do something differently because with my busier lifestyle, I didn't have time to lose weight. I didn't have time to lose the same 15 pounds, like 10 more times. You know, I just wanted it to be gone and to keep it off forever. So that's really how I got into realizing I need to try, I need to learn a sustainable lifestyle that makes me feel good while I'm losing weight. Cause then I have energy and focus and I'm excited as I'm losing weight. And then it will stay off for the long term, which it has. Yeah. I love that because like your recipes are super delicious and like, 
I loved it because the gym isn't even that much because, you know, it's like abs are, they say, well, abs are gyms, what? Abs are made in the kitchen. And uh, yep. <laughs> what I really love about it, it's like, it's just super simple to follow your recipes. Everything's just so simple and it's like time efficient. It's not like you have to spend like four hours on a treadmill, which I hate. And like, I didn't even go to the gym that much when I was like going through your program. I lost a bunch of weight and I had a lot of fun. It's freaking delicious. So, um, and I think, do you blame your mom for cooking such delicious food? Because I hear your brother talk about her amazing food all the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she was. A, she is a great cook. She is a great cook. So I definitely learned my cooking from her, and then I modified to her dishes um, to make them lighter and healthier. I love that. So you run Masala Body. So can you explain to us, like, what is, what is a Masala Body? Yes, absolutely. So yes, MasalaBody.com. That's my um my website. And um, so Masala is a blend of spices. And when I started losing weight and I lost the 40 pounds that have stayed off now for almost over eight years, um, I did it by adding, um, by changing what I was eating so that I was eating mostly, most or mostly to all real natural food. And then I added spices to make it taste good. So like, I don't really like to eat vegetables like celery or cauliflower yeah, raw. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, the, of course, I'd have to force myself, but the more vegetables you eat, it becomes easier to lose weight. And it's, it's, it keeps you full with zero calories. It's like free food, basically, you can mm -hmm. eat as much as you want. And, uh, and but I, I to get myself to, to eat more of those vegetables, I needed to use flavors and spices. Mm -hmm. And so I started adding flavors and spices that I had known I was very comfortable with them because I grew up as my mom used them in our traditional Indian cooking mm -hmm. um, where in the in the household I grew up in and uh, so I was easily able to add spices like ginger garlic turmeric um, coriander cumin uh, and and my 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 cauliflower would just perk up like my beans I would that I would make would perk up and even the the meat that I was eating or the fish that I was eating would taste so much better mm -hmm. and and so Masala is a blend of spices, but a masala body is what a, a spicy body. So it's like if you eat more spices in your food, it's easier to lose weight because you are, the food is tasting good and there's also metabolism boosting benefits of many of the spices. Mm -hmm. And as you're eating this spicy food and feeling so excited about the food yeah. that you're eating every day, your body is getting hotter and it's getting lighter and you get this spicy hot body as well. So it's kind of like add, add, if you add some spices, you get a spicy body and that's how Masala Body came to be. I love that. And I'm just going to say this, uh, go to Masala Body on Instagram and like I saw your beach body picture. Holy shit. You look so hot. Oh my God. Uh, everyone go follow her on Instagram. Because <laughs> Thank you. you. I can't believe you had two kids. What, what the hell? This is so unfair. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was a boogie board picture. Look at your abs. Oh my gosh. Um, so how much time do you spend? How much time do I spend doing what? Cooking. Oh, how much time do I spend cooking? Well, I, okay. This may even really sound surprising. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have such a pattern of what to make every week. Like I just know what to eat. Mm -hmm. I spend less than an hour a week cooking my meal wow. for the week. And, um, and it's because I, there's a lot of learnings that have gone into this. And part of it is, um, you know, once you learn how to stock your kitchen quickly, then you can just put stuff, you can put stuff together. It's a combination of quick cooking methods. So I use like quick cooking methods like crock pot and roasting foods. Um, and I, I know what I'm eating. Like I have a plan for myself every single week. So I'm not like sitting in the kitchen, looking around, wondering, and then end, I end up like making a grilled cheese sandwich or eating cereal for dinner. I actually have a plan. So I know already what I'm eating and I've marinated or prepared most of the dishes earlier in the week on Sunday, and that's included in the one hour. Uh, and so I just pull it out and just like warm it up. And so that's kind of another tip. And then another reason that I'm able to do it in one hour a week is because over time, learning how my body works. And, and like when you mentioned my abs, thank you so much. I, but I, what I realized is there's, there's foods 
that when you eat them, like you, you, your fat around your midsection literally disappears. Like, mm -hmm. and it's so easy to maintain it. If you just eat these foods, you really don't even have to go to the gym that much. Like you can go, but it's, it's extra. You can mm -hmm. actually get a super flat tummy with abs. If you like, just by what you're eating and you can feel full and satisfied all the time. So part of the secret is to have healthy food ready when you're hungry. And that's why I really feel like it's very important to cook quickly um, or to, to, to know how to not, not necessarily to cook quickly, sorry, but to actually be able to put your meals together really quickly and to know what you're eating, to have these easy cooking methods. Um, it, it just makes it, it all comes together and then you're not thinking about that and you can think about your business or you can think about having more energy for ideas and masterminds instead of being focused, instead of being pulled down by what am I going to eat for lunch or I'm so tired because of what I ate. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I think a lot of our listeners do actually think about that um, instead of, they want to think about it instead of getting like a Snickers bar or something. So um, mm -hmm. how much, how much time do you spend at the gym then? So the gym, I really do not spend that much time. Like I go, I like to go three days a week. Like a good, a good week is three days a week where I exercise for about 45 minutes to 55 minutes of that hour um, or, or 45 to 55 minutes. I go for an hour and I, and like between getting there and getting my shoes off or changing my shoes and all that, it's like 45 to 55 minutes. And I go, I like to go three days a week. Sometimes I go only two days a week. But um, I, I've been able to maintain my, um, my weight with, with only that. And when I'm at the gym, I'm not like running like five miles or anything like that. Like I actually focus on strategic exercises, mm -hmm. um, which don't take a lot of time and just have a lot of impact. So basically they burn fat quickly. And a lot of those exercises are focusing on strength training. So lifting, lifting weights, doing, for example, lunges while holding weights at your side. Um, and, um, you know, lifting, like doing squats and things like that, because as you build more muscle on your body, you become a fat burning machine because uh, muscle uh, burns more calories than fat. And so if you're focusing on adding more muscle on your body, then you could literally just be sitting around and you're burning fat like that. So mm -hmm. that's been one of the secrets in how I have um, how I've kept this weight off for so long and so easily because I paired, I first focused on food and then I added in gaining more muscle on my body and I'm not muscular. I'm not bulky at all. I just have more muscle than I would, you know, if I wasn't prioritizing it. And, and because of that, it's like the fat just, just stays off. So doing those two things is really key, like building more muscle and then eating, you know, eating natural, real foods that keep your weight low. Mm -hmm. I love that. So I'm going to give out one of the secrets, I guess. Uh, so will I become less Asian if I give up rice? <laughs> yeah, I love this question. I love this question. Will you become less Asian? Well, I mean, I want to tell you a real quick story that, that relates to that. And um, when I first started, uh, when I first lost weight, the way that I actually started Masala Body, I can even like share this. I think this could be really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I lost 40 pounds and everyone, all of these women in my neighborhood started asking me how mm -hmm. I lost the weight. Mm -hmm. And they were like, give me your recipes, tell me everything. And so I did tell them that I started replacing rice with more fibrous carbs, mm -hmm. like carbs that keep you full instead of mm -hmm. like what happens with rice is when you eat it, you just, you eat it and it burns off quickly. I mean, it, it basically turn, it elevates your blood sugar and then it gets stored as fat and you mm -hmm. feel hungry again. So if you eat rice, you'll often feel like you feel hungry shortly after. Um, mm -hmm. Well, Obviously, in the Asian culture, yes, rice is a very big staple. It was actually a staple in my and when I grew up. I know in the you know in other Asian cultures, it's a very big staple. And so when I would say, you know, to take out your rice or to decrease rice, like people would just tell me exactly what you said. Well, they would say, "I'm Asian. I can't. I can't not eat rice. Yeah. There's. I just can't do this at all." Yeah. And so, um, and they would shut it down. But yet they were the ones that were asking me for advice on how I lost forty pounds, and it happened. I lost the forty pounds in nine months. And so it was very drastic. It was, people saw the change quickly. Um, and so you are not, you are not less Asian if you, if you, if you, eat, uh. if you don't eat rice and you do not have to absolutely not eat rice. 
It's just that we look at rice in a different way. Um, we don't look at it as a main part of our plate. We look at it as more of a side. And so instead of having rice and then topping it with everything. It's more like have all the vegetables, have all the protein, and then have rice on the side or have rice like when you need to have it, like maybe once a week or so. But um, if, you, if you feel like you absolutely can't take out rice, then still have it, but add more of the other foods, like add more of the healthier foods, and you actually will start to see your weight coming off and you'll just want to keep doing this. You'll feel so good. So so this is kind of one of those, yes, I love your question. You won't be less Asian. You can, you can do it as you, you can kind of balance it out. But also if something's working, like take a look at it and like see how you can adapt it. Because those people that just shut down when I told them about the rice piece and they decided not to try anything, well, you know, they're not going to lose, they're not going to get healthier at all because they're not taking any pieces. Like you could take some pieces of getting healthy and start there and then see if you can take on others. Mm -hmm. That's great. So um, what do your students say about your programs? Okay, so my students say, um, so with Spice Yourself Skinny, the program that you, um, that you were in, I, I mean, the food is really, it really truly is amazing. It's almost like you cannot believe that you're losing weight while you're eating like that because we, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, it's like, it tastes so good and we are stereotyped and from a lot of our past, we believe that um, healthy food has to taste disgusting and boring and be in tiny quantities and make us starving. And so in Spice Yourself Skinny, the food is so flavorful and so delicious that people are like, um, they can't believe that they're, that they're losing weight. And then the main thing that people say about um, that program, as well as my other programs, because I also have uh, a private, I, I, coach, I coach women privately with my one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and they all say that it is so easy to lose weight. They're like, I didn't know it could be this easy. And it really is easy once you learn uh, the foods to eat more of. And as a result, you, stop, you start craving foods like sugar less. So when you feel fulfilled and your body is just um, like satiated and you're not hungry, you actually don't crave sugar. You don't crave unhealthy foods. And as a result, you're just losing weight and you're not feeling like you're in pain at all. And so a lot of people describe uh, my weight loss programs as really easy. And, um, and the other thing is it's fun. Like everything, that, that you'll, one of the things that, um, that's a key, key kind of behavior in, uh, in behavior change is to adopt new behaviors, you really want to have fun with those behaviors. So if you look at something as work, like for example, building a business, if you look at it as like work and like you don't want to do it, then you're really not going to get to it every day. Like you're going to keep putting it off and trying to do other things. But if you look at it as fun and exciting and something that's going to bring you more abundance into your life, then you're going to want to work on that every single day. Like I'm sure a lot of your listeners um, feel it's like we're so excited to work on our business. And so with weight loss, it's also similar. If you're eating food that you love and that and you're, you're thinking about your health and you're changing your mindsets and realizing that you're treating yourself with such self-care, you're going to be excited to lose weight. You're going to be excited because you know that you're stepping into a healthier lifestyle and that's something that you want for yourself. I love that. So, so amazing. Yeah, I highly can't recommend it enough. So uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Who do you find funny besides me and you, uh, if it's even possible? So like the third person, third funniest person you think. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, the next funny, funny person. Okay. Well, this is this. There's there's a couple of people. So I find Steve Carell like so funny. Oh, I cannot yes. stop laughing. <laughs> he is so. Oh my god. I love him. Like The Office is literally the show. The Office. It plays on my TV even now all the time. Um, he is. Uh, he, he's just so hilarious. I just, I just love him so much. Um, so, I mean, I would say that like, he's one of the, one of the funniest people, um, that, that I really like. And then the other person that I think is hilarious, her name's Lily Singh. Do you know her? She, so she is, um, yeah, superwoman. Super, uh, yeah, superwoman. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Superwoman. Exactly. Superwoman. So on YouTube, she has, she had like millions like over over it's probably like over 15 million now um mm -hmm. viewers but she just got the she's the first female to get her a late late night talk show or the first female to get a late night talk show on national yes, television absolutely and yeah and, and so she follows jimmy fallon 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just love her skits and I like how she's self-made. Like she yeah, was she's, found from her YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. She's incredible. Awesome. Yep. Now I know mm-hmm. who you listen to. That's, that's awesome. I always think mm-hmm. it's interesting who people find funny because uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's interesting who they relate to. That's great. So um, mm-hmm. what are some mistakes that people make when they're trying to lose weight? Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, well, there's a ton of mistakes that I have made also, and that so many people make. And a lot of times it's because of what we've been taught from the weight loss industry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the biggest mistakes is to try to try to go on like a massive binge diet, or I mean, like, I mean, like basically uh, on a, uh, where you're depriving yourself and you're like cutting everything and you're trying to exercise so much, basically just like, you're setting yourself up for a yo-yo when you do that. So if you're like, I'm going to go on the cabbage soup diet, or I'm going to go on, um, I'm going to eat, you know, like 800 calories for one week. Well, I mean, that's just like, you don't have to do that to lose weight. And yeah, sure. You're going to lose weight if you ate, if you eat 800 calories, but seriously, how many days can you do that? Like what's going to happen is right after you're done with that kind of trendy bad diet, um, you're going to end up eating like triple the calories or way more because you had such a miserable time when you were, when you were trying to lose weight. So the worst thing is to kind of like have a goal and try to work quickly towards it. Like say if you have a party that's coming up in two weeks or a vacation that's coming up in two weeks or a month, and you're just quickly trying to lose weight for that. Well, the better thing to do is to actually slowly change the habits in your life, like, and make it easy on yourself because then you are creating a healthy lifestyle. So like one example on how to get started is to look at your breakfast and to say, okay, what am I eating for breakfast? Am I setting myself up for a successful, like energetic focused day? Or am I just skipping it and then just like getting ravenous at lunchtime? And, um, you know, like starting with having that healthy breakfast, that's one example of like a keystone habit that once you get that right, the rest of the day flows so much easier and it's, it's much more simpler to be healthy. And, and that's not like a fad diet. That's a change in your behavior. And so once you get that right, then you can layer on a healthy snack in the afternoon. And then you can layer on maybe a late night, a late night indulgence that's healthy for you, for those of us that have late night cravings. So you kind of layer these behaviors on and pretty soon you have created this healthy lifestyle for yourself. Your weight is coming off. You're feeling more energy and you're not going to yo-yo back because you didn't ever go on a diet. You just changed your behavior. Hmm. I love that. So, um, okay, here's my dilemma. And actually I still have this dilemma right now picking gyms. So, okay. I went to LA fitness. It was like, okay. Um, I've gone to 24 hour fitness. It was a little bit too messy Mm-hmm. for my taste mm-hmm. and I went to Equinox I really like the showers but it's like I'm trying to pick up a rich man and I feel like everyone's like uh and I have no nothing 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 against them it's like all gay men and like I can't find a rich sugar daddy who's fat and out of shape at Equinox but I like the showers <laughs> so how do I pick the right gym for me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're so funny okay that is definitely uh let me think about that question <laughs> yeah so if you I like how you're just straight up about how you're trying to pick up a, ri- a rich man. I'm a gold Equinox. digger. I'm a gold digger. <laughs> okay. This is what Americans brought Chinese people to do. Okay. <laughs> and I don't do physical labor. So I'm picking up where. Okay. But now I have to update it to diamond digger because I need a three carat canary diamond ring with the Asher set <gasps> setting in order to like be convinced to get married again. Oh, yes. And but you know what you want, Lee. You know what you want. You're going to get it. I love it. You know exactly what you want. <laughs> yeah. Don't care about uh, thoughts on interracial relationships. You shouldn't judge him. Like Martin Luther King Jr. said, you shouldn't judge a man by the, co- the color of his skin, but the content of his wallet. So I go by <laughs> his philosophy. It's very wonderful. Oh, it's my God. You are. Right? You're so... You're so funny. And I love it. You, 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 I, I'm not saying it's wrong either. I'm not saying that's wrong. Yeah, that is, I love your perspective. Um, well, I would say, so for the gym, um, I mean, these are things that are, these are things getting back to your question. These are things that are important. If you're looking for a certain kind of person and they're not there, absolutely. Like take that into account. Um, everyone has their things that, 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 uh, that, um, kind of get them to go to the gym. So I would say really be honest with yourself and like, how can you make it easy on yourself to go to the gym? 
gym. Um, a few kind of parameters or levers are number one is proximity to your place. Now, if it's mm-hmm. really far, but if it's like a specialty gym, mm-hmm. even if it's really special for you and it's, if, if it's going to take you like 20 minutes to get there and 20 minutes to get back, there's going to be a lot of days where you're going to think, okay, I could save myself an hour if I don't go to the gym and I could actually do these other things. And it's going to be easy to push that away. But if it's somewhere that's close to you, um, and you can eat quickly get there, that's going to make a difference. So, and that's also dependent on you. Like maybe you're okay driving 20 minutes and you know that you're going to get there, then that's fine. But this is something to think about. Um, a second thing is uh, what kind of accountability do you need to get to the gym? Because a, like gyms literally feed off of people paying their subscriptions and then never coming. And so what do you actually get? How are you going to get yourself to the gym? Is it, do you, is it, do you need to take a class? Um, so then you'd look at the classes. Is it that you need a personal trainer that's waiting there to meet you there? Well, in that case, make sure that they have good personal trainers there and they have a good package for, for personal training. Um, really think about accountability because uh, some of us need it and some of us don't. So some of us d- will get to the gym no matter what, but others like me, I actually need accountability and I need someone waiting for me at the gym. Otherwise I don't go there. And so I actually have to pay like a lot of extra money just so I can get to the gym. So that personal trainer is waiting for me. And that's the way that I systemize go- getting to the gym two to three days a week. I don't rely on my willpower. I don't rely on like, if I feel like getting up at 5 a.m. that day, cause I-, I need to go before my kids wake up and before my day starts. So if I just rely on myself, I'm never going to do it. But whenever the um, personal trainer is waiting for me, I don't really want him just like, I don't want to let him down. And so, and I, and I also paid for it. So I don't want to like every time be wasting that. Um, So those are a few things. And then the other thing is, yeah, do you like the gym? Do you like the appearance? Mm -hmm. Um, do you like the machines that it has? Like, do you like the systems and the things that they have in there? Um, you know, that's also important. So those are kind of three different areas to, to really look at in choosing your gym. Mm, I love that. I love down so, uh, systematically. So, um, what advice do you have for moms? So I think that is a unique perspective that you can offer and it's like, I don't have kids, so I I don't know. Do you Mm. have any advice on moms? Yes, I have a special advice for moms that mo- that nobody else tells moms. Um, and this is specifically around making food for yourself and the family, because that becomes a big challenge when you're working on losing weight. Um, like, how do you make food for your family? And how do you make food for yourself? Well, one of the things is that like, if you use some of the recipes on my website, um, that are free, they there's they actually have, um, there's there are meals that the whole family can love. So that is possible, but it does get challenging with kids to feed them. Like there's a lot of kids that don't like vegetables as much as you might want to have vegetables, et cetera. And so my advice is seriously prioritize yourself first, like prioritize what you're eating, make sure you have your food together, because if you don't have your meals and what you're going to eat, then you are going to end up defaulting to your kids like mashed potatoes or their chicken nuggets or their fish, their little golden fish that are left over. And you're just going to keep eating their meals. And you are better than that. You deserve to have a nourishing, warm meal, whether or not your kids eat it or not. And so what I recommend is um, having like creating, like figuring out what you like and at least making dinner for yourself. Like you can easily make dinner for yourself. And also if you need to make something different for the kids, then make that for the kids. Like you could grill salmon or you could grill chicken with vegetables and just put it in the oven and your kids may eat that. That's great. But even if they don't, you should eat it anyway, because you have to take care of yourself to be healthier. You, and, and the more you take care of yourself, the more you're going to be able to take care of your kids and your family. And so whatever it takes to make sure there's healthy food on your plate, um, do it. And it doesn't have to mean that your kids eat the same. Cause I find this dilemma of, Oh, I want to only make one meal for everyone. And then what happens is the mom starts eating the unhealthier foods that their kids are eating. And, um, and so it's really important for you to find simple meals that you can at least prepare for yourself. And if they join in great, but even if they don't, you need to eat it so that you can keep yourself like on, on target, just getting to your goals in all areas. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, um, what advice do you have for people who hate cooking and don't have time to meal prep? Okay. 
Absolutely. I actually like talk about this um, in, in many of my courses, like at Spice Yourself Skinny, I have a workshop, a bonus workshop that's um, around how to cook in one hour a week. Um, so what I uh, like to do is I recommend it's you don't have to follow a meal plan, meaning a meal plan is different meals every day. Um, lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. It's like different. And so if you don't want a meal plan, I recommend you follow a meal framework, which we have in Spice Yourself Skinny and I also have in my private coaching. Um, and it is a, a framework of like the way that you want to put your food on your plate. And so even if you don't want to cook, you can quickly buy things. Like you can buy things that are already ready. Um, and so let me just share this framework. The framework is to have um, generally it's about 40% of protein, 40% um, vegetables, and 20% either a carb or a fat or a healthy fat. So like you could easily do this without cooking. So like for your vegetable, you could buy grape tomatoes or you could buy greens in a bag, like salad greens in a bag, or you could buy broccoli and just steam it in the microwave. Like you could easily do that. For your protein, you could do um, whether it's chicken or eggs or fish or tofu and just prepare it however you want to prepare it. And you can also like buy it from the deli if you don't want to, you know, or you could buy a rotisserie chicken. You could cut off the side, you could cut off the, um, the skin because that's where a lot of the extra oil and fat is that you don't necessarily need. Um, you know, and you can do that. You can buy ready-made things and, um, you know, and for your healthy carb or your healthy fat, that's like things like, uh, half an avocado or some nuts or um, black beans that you rinsed off at, from a can, which is totally fine. Like those are some examples. So you can just purchase some of these things and many of these things and just and put it together like that. And so if you can cook your protein, it makes it nicer because you know what goes on it. But even that, you know, you can work around it. So it's very possible. Like once you have a framework, then you can just fill it in and you don't have to meal plan. So I'm at the place now and after after people go through my spice yourself skinny system and then and also when people uh, work with me one-on-one -on -one coaching we start off with meal planning like we do meal plan because it teaches you the recipes you like and it teaches you how much you need to eat to feel full and then after that you don't have to keep following a specific meal plan when you learn the recipes that are that you like you can just have that you can integrate those into your week and you can even repeat them um, and so it starts to become easier once you have a few, like say, once you have five go-to recipes, it, it can quickly, you know, you can, you have these go-to recipes and you can repeat them and that's completely fine too. Mm -hmm. Great. So, um, what's the overall combined weight loss of all your students? Oh, I love that question. Oh my gosh. I actually have to do like a full, um, I Red actually have to, yeah, you know, all yes, that. I have to go and do, but I would definitely say it's over 3000 pounds Holy that have been, wow. yeah, that my, that my clients and my students have lost because I actually even have had people lose over a hundred pounds. I've had many people lose 40 pounds mm -hmm. and then a lot of people lose between 15 and 30 pounds. Um, and so I have all of those ranges and what, like all of my programs are eight weeks long. And so the, so women lose a good amount of weight in that eight weeks, but then they continue with the system that we set up during the eight weeks. Cause that's what my programs are all about setting you up with a lifestyle transformation. And so you transform your lifestyle and then you keep losing weight. And so that's why we, women have just continued to follow my system. And then they check in with me like six months later and they've lost 40 pounds, you know, or more. So it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Cool. So um, how can we join uh, your programs? How can we find out more about you? Uh, any new projects coming up? What's what's the best way to get in touch with you? Oh, thanks for asking. Well, I have a free recipe book um, on my website right now. I'm not sure how long it's going to stay up, but I'm going to keep it up um, for you, Lee, and for your listeners for a little bit. Um, this is uh, at my website, masalabody.com, and it's my free recipe book called seven spicy recipes to melt away your first seven pounds. And it actually includes a lot of the spice yourself skinny favorites like Thai thinning curry. Um, it includes also this smoked paprika detox bowl, which we love in spice yourself skinny. And it also includes a chocolate dessert with spices in it, which are amazing. Um, 
And, and so you can check that out. And then once you get, um, once you sign up for the free um, recipe book, I'll also send you some more tips and more strategies and more recipes and, and mindsets on losing weight and on eating delicious food along the way. Um, and so, and then you'll be in touch with me through my, through, through, through my website. And, and then I'm also on Instagram at Masala Body. And I am posting stories every day. I share my life. I share tips on how to get off sugar, on how to, um, how just overall how to lose weight. Uh, and so that's another place. And I actually am um, going to be releasing my Spice Yourself Skinny program in January uh, 2020. And that's going to be amazing. We're going to have a great, great group. Um, in that, and we're going to do eight weeks together of Spice Yourself Skinny and just losing weight and getting the getting the year started like that. So those are a few of the things that are happening. And, and if you'd like to find out more about that, just grab my free recipe book at um, masalabody.com, and then you will get the emails when um, when Spice Yourself Skinny starts to be released. I love that. So thank you so much for this amazing, incredible interview. Um, I learned so much from this. I hope it's like understanding like how much amazing that you just shared so that everyone can look like well not everyone can look like you that's not impossible um but you know at least be healthy and look hot and not spend 40 hours at the gym so thank you so much nagina it was amazing pleasure to have you hope to have you on future episodes to come thank you lee it's been such a pleasure talking with you again thank you all right